Hello everyone, Financial Fanta here, and you're watching FantaVision, and today I am discussing how GameStop has just... Wow, lots of things going on there. We've got new board members, we've got them losing $165 million, but let's just dive right in. Why not, right? So why am I day drinking and wearing this whole getup? Well, we're going to be talking about a whole lot of different financial things, namely... We're going to be talking about the new board members that have kind of wormed their way into the GameStop boardroom. And now, that sounds like a negative connotation, but to me, and I believe you, that's actually a good thing, but a bad thing, according to the other people on the GameStop board. I feel like the main reason that they didn't want new blood on their team is because of several things that they point out that is wrong with the company as a whole and a lot of those people are worried about their checkbook so recently gamestop has had two new board members joining from an activist investment group and an activist investor if you don't know which i didn't until I started making this video is an individual or group of investors that basically buy a ton of shares in a publicly traded company to get board seats and to make significant changes in said company and this group has been wanting to make changes in GameStop for a while now. And I believe they've actually been holding stock since like 2011. So these people have a vested interest in the company and actually want to see it change for the better. Now there are lots of people on the GameStop subreddit and places like that that are wildly speculating whether or not these are just vultures that are circling the GameStop corpse or if it is actually a group that is looking to really make distinctive great changes and restore GameStop. That's what they called their whole presentation that they gave to shareholders, that this is a plan to restore GameStop. Now, since, I don't know when, but at some point they took this presentation down off the internet, but on their subreddit, they used the Wayback Machine, I downloaded it, I went through the presentation, and I wanted to highlight some of the things that they pointed out that were wrong with the company. And it's funny because like I said, some of these people in the subreddit that work for GameStop and have worked there for a long time see these people as opportunistic people that are looking to drain GameStop even faster. But, you know, a lot of the points they make are the same points that I have made in countless other videos discussing about what GameStop is doing wrong and what I would do as CEO to change GameStop and make it for the better. So as a person who has said a lot of these same things, it's refreshing to hear it come from people that are now becoming in charge of GameStop and we might actually see something happen. Now, I'm not gonna go over their entire plan in this video, if you guys want me to do a separate video on what their plan exactly is, I just wanted to show some of the highlights and complaints of what they've talked about when it comes to issues. And I, because it's just, it's so priceless. It's so great seeing that the stuff that Camelot and I have talked about in, in other videos is being forced into these meetings. And like, this is the issue. You need to look at it. And it's so good. It's great. So I made a quick couple notes about some other slides before we get into the other like main slides that I can actually show you that, that's got some imagery, interesting stuff to look at. There are lots of walls of text that basically state that many of their directors are ineffective, have failed to make changes in the company to stay competitive. They failed in addressing COVID-19 properly. Their stocks suck for long-term investors. Employees hate the company and customers continue to complain about the company. Oh, and by the way, management sucks. So let's go ahead and dive into some of these slides and let's start with how they handled COVID because this was a huge thing in this presentation because really GameStop is a company that has had a reputation in decline for a very long time and what they desperately need to do and what these new board members and these new investors have been stating over and over in this presentation is that is one of their main flaws is their reputation. Their reputation has tanked. And in order to get back customer trust, you need to re-earn that reputation. You need to get a better reputation because right now it's awful. I mean, look at this slide right now. Customers are unhappy with GameStop. I love this. Negative social media posts regarding GameStop spiked during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Of course, that's still going on right now, but it's just so funny to see that during that time when they're doing a bunch of really sketchy things, which we'll get into once again, look at all that anger. I love that they have anger, disgust, fear, joy, sadness, and surprise. What is this, the the Disney Pixar movie? Anyway, so look right here. Anger is skyrocketing, and I'd like to think that during this time, Camelot and I were covering the hell out of what was going on during this COVID pandemic and how they were responding to it. And uh, yeah, a lot of people unhappy. And for obvious and good reasons, I might add. And then here's the slideshow of the media, like the mainstream media, covering how GameStop fumbles the COVID-19 crisis. We've got Retail Wire saying that they could lose more than it wins by keeping stores open. Yes, 100%. Talking about how I got Vice saying they've got no idea what to do about the coronavirus. We get the Boston Globe that's telling employees to wrap their hands in plastic bags to go back to work. Do you remember I covered that? I had an employee send in a story about what was going on and they were using plastic bags instead of gloves because they did not have enough gloves. Just ridiculous. And then CNN talking about how it's going to close all of its storefronts. Finally finally going to start closing them as different lawmakers force them to close due to stay-at-home orders. Ridiculous. This is why GameStop is failing. Their reputation is awful. Speaking of awful reputation, let's look at the GameStop employees have no confidence in new leadership slide. Gotta love this. And it just shows how, how bad the morale has been with GameStop employees even after the new leadership. Because for some reason, GameStop thought that, oh, let's just put in a new CEO. That'll fix everything. And this, this group is like, no, you need to actually make changes for the better in order to make people happy. I love this one in particular. Screw GameStop. I worked GameStop full time for more than three years. No recognition, unreasonable expectations, awful management. That sums up my time at GameStop in a nutshell. I worked there for four, like four years, almost five and that was my entire, that was it. There's no recognition. They don't care about you. And it's just an awful company to work for. And this is in 2020. This, this review came in February 1st of 2020. The same thing has been happening for years. And even after new management, it's still happening. Oh, and I also love this one as well. And it's also a sentiment that I have seen all over the GameStop subreddit when they're not too busy licking the corporate boot. Corporate is awful and pretty much running the company into the ground. That's, that's exactly what's happening, especially as they continue to make these poor decisions that reflect very poorly on the company as a whole and continue to give it a bad reputation. Now you may be thinking, well, you know, all of these people are doing terrible on the board of executives. All the different higher ups are doing an awful job of turning the company around. So they must be suffering as well, right? Of course not, of course they're not. That's ridiculous. They still own a private jet despite a new team and flailing performance. Love that. And while employees were fired and profitability plummeted, management maintained its 22 seat luxury bombardier CL604 private jet. That is right. As they were closing stores and people were losing jobs, people were having their pay cut, hours cut, their, short, their stores were short-staffed, they were flying around in a private jet, which I love this part. They're only seven minutes away from an airport in their corporate office. So why do you need a corporate jet when you are right next to an airport? What is the reason besides the fact that they are, they just feel entitled to it? Speaking of entitlement, let's talk about how much money they're making. Over the past two years, GameStop has paid $32 million in bonuses. In bonuses. Are you fucking kidding me? You are paying bonuses to these people that are running the company into the ground that have not made any meaningful changes over the past couple of years, even though it was, I mean, you could see in the tea leaves very far away that this was going to happen. You could see that this sort of store and the way they were running it was not sustainable. But what happened? They didn't change anything and instead threw more board games and pop figures in their stores. 
while taking home $32 million, shutting down hundreds and hundreds of stores, people losing jobs left and right, and yet these assholes at the top are making $32 million, and this is not including their salary, this is just bonuses. That's insane. You do not get a bonus, well, at least you shouldn't, in this world without being successful. I mean, it's ridiculous. How, how, how can you be losing at something and still being rewarded with that much money? Now, these new investors and board members talk about how they want to address all of these different issues. They want to address the reputation. They want to address the overpayment of these executives. They want to tackle all these issues and take care of them and actually turn GameStop around. That is what they are saying in this PowerPoint. And again, if you want me to make a separate video on that, I will. I just wanted to talk about how they have finally gotten some new blood on that boardroom. And I really do hope that this is restore GameStop. Restore. And why do I say that? Because GameStop is a terrible company and I've constantly said, I kind of hope they just die now. If they can actually do what they're saying in this presentation, if they really do want to eliminate these unnecessary millions of dollars of bonuses, I mean... The bonuses are crazy. I mean, some of these people are getting, I mean, Georgie Sherman just got $10.5 million just to become the CEO. That was his signing bonus. That's fucking ridiculous. He didn't even do anything yet. And he got paid $10.5 million. And I understand that that is a normal thing in the corporate world, which is stupid. It shouldn't be. I'm hoping that they actually slash things like this. Because they are complaining about it. They are showing how ridiculous it is that they have made this much money and made zero changes. They have not brought the stock price back up. They have not stopped stores from closing. They have not stopped people from losing their jobs. And they have not made the store profitable. They just lost, what was it, $165 million? $165 million. Ridiculous. And they're still getting paid millions of dollars to do a shit job. I'm hoping these people will actually make some real change and actually make GameStop a decent place to work for people. Because the thing is, I've, I've thought about it. Like I said, I wanted GameStop to die. But that's a lot of people losing their jobs. That's a lot of people who depend on that paycheck. And there's a lot of people that still enjoy the work despite GameStop corporate and despite how they're treated by all their higher ups. So I want those people to not only continue to have a job, but I want them to be paid fairly, treated fairly, and be able to know that they have a secure future with a company instead of worrying about their job constantly. Because that's that's the mindset that these people are in. And I feel so bad for anybody that works at GameStop right now. They must be just on edge all the time. Even when they're not at work, you think at, at home, that worry goes away as soon as they leave GameStop? No, they go home and wonder, I really hope I have a job the next day. How long will this company survive? How long can we keep taking $165 million losses? I mean, it's last year they made a profit at this time during this quarter of last year, they made 7 million. That's not even a lot, but at least they made some sort of profit. 165 in loss, 165 million in loss. That's just crazy. So I really do hope they turn it around. I really do hope these new people are not just vultures picking at the remains of GameStop and will actually restore GameStop to what it was. I hope they cut the fat. I hope they cut out the people that are not qualified and they talk about that. They want their board members to replace two that don't even have any retail experience. So we'll see what happens. And again, I know I've said this, this will be my third time. If you want a video, because I have this full presentation on my computer now, if you want a full video about what exactly they're going to do, what their plan is to save GameStop in detail, I will make a separate video, put on this whole getup. It'll be great. Thanks for watching everyone. Let me know what you guys think about in the comments down below. If you think these people are going to be able to turn it around, or if you think they're just opportunistic, let me know. Like the video if you guys liked it, subscribe for more content, and as always, have a fantastic day. See you guys. It's currently 11.30 a.m. 
I've never drank this early that I can remember. Wow, it feels really wrong, but I felt it. It fit the aesthetic, you know. It fit the businessman aesthetic. We've we've all watched a couple episodes of Mad Men, you know. We've all seen them just drinking constantly during the day and smoking countless cigarettes. That's that's what you think of when you think of the American elite executive just sipping scotch or some sort of bourbon. Uh, anyway, I also wanted to say that unfortunately I've got some some bad news and some good news. I'll get the bad news out of the way first. I will not be streaming this Tuesday or Thursday. I should be streaming Friday. I don't know. My, my schedule is kind of wonky at the moment. And also, I do have some good news that I will be shooting the podcast tomorrow with Eric and hopefully have it up by this Friday. So that's right. Eric's returning. We're going to talk about a bunch of different topics, see what he's been doing this whole time, and of course, discuss the PlayStation 5 and what else has been going on. 